screensavers. I'm Kate Patello. And I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. Coming up in today's show, Kate has a Windows tip for easier Windows menu access. It's menus a pop in today on the Windows tip. It's also, pop it, pop it fresh. Also, Leo will be chatting with our friends at PC Magazine to find out which batteries you should be using in your digital cameras. Very important stuff. If you use a digital camera, man, those things suck up the power. We're going to show you how to save a little bit. Then later, Sumi Das, has, somebody <laughs> asked us in Greenville, how do you do that Sumi Das thing? Like, this is some special trick. Yeah, so we actually taught the whole crowd and had the whole crowd doing the Sumi. Sumi would have been so excited this to see This is a double Sumi? Double Sumi. Semi Sumi. sumi. Sumi Das has a report about a few new products that expand the handheld computer possibilities. That's coming up on today's Fresh Gear. Fresh Gear. Oh, I forgot to do the Fresh Gear dance. <laughs> I'm gone two days and you forget Fresh, fresh gear. gear. There we go. Today in the chat room, we're asking you, do you deserve a Windows install disk? Oh, it's been found out that Microsoft has let all of its OEM manufacturers, Gateway, Dell, a bunch of them know that that apparently all of the Windows 98 system CDs that have been bundled with the systems are being unbundled and sold separately. Or at least they've accused the manufacturers of this. So as a result, as of January 1st, 2000, folks, you will not get a Windows 98 CD with your computer anymore. You will only get a recovery disk as provided to you by the manufacturer. So... Uh, you know what I have to say about this? Listen what do you have to say about that? <laughs> Bogus! <laughs> Bogus. Bogus. <laughs> Actually, if you bought a compact uh, home computer or uh, HP home computer, a lot of home computers, a lot of laptops, for a long time, instead of getting the Windows disk, you would get a restore disk. Now, what's wrong with a restore disk? Well, one of the problems with a restore disk is the only way you can reinstall Windows is by blasting out the contents of your hard drive. Any data, any customizations, any applications you've installed will be gone. You go back to the original state of the computer when you took it home. Now, have you not purchased a full user license if you bought the machine? You paid the extra hundred bucks for Windows. You, the user, have earned a copy of the disk. Yeah, we hear a lot of problems that people don't have when they don't have their Windows disk. There's so many things you cannot do. Of course. Now, by the way, we should say Microsoft has not announced that they're going to do this. A, a, a website has published a, a supposedly internal document from Microsoft that says that they plan to do this. It's not too late. They probably can change their policy. And if you complain enough, they probably will change their policy. Mm -hmm. But we don't think it's a very good idea not to. If you bought Windows 98 and you basically get it with your computer, you ought to have the full Windows installed. It's just like anybody else went to the retail store. The reason they don't do it? Piracy. piracy. Yeah. And piracy has been absolutely rampant overseas, especially an enormous percentage of software sold overseas is pirated. So we see where they're coming from. But I'm thinking, couldn't they come up with another way to do this? Like, oh, say you order the computer, then you have to mail in a form in order to get your CD as a licensed user. Something like that. Anything. Well, but according to this document, they're even doing something worse, which we'll talk about a little bit later on. It's even more than just the restore disk. They're actually going to make sure that you use it. We'll talk about that. Oh, yeah. The, ooh. Oh, okay. We'll save Here's it. Here's your chance to vote before, <laughs> before we go too far. Take our web poll at thescreensavers.com. And, of course, while you're there, click on the talk back feature. Tell us how you really think. Arr! And what do you think? what the rest of you think as well. You can also give us a call on the phone, 888-989-7879. Chat with us chat.zdnet.com. Go to the screensavers room. That's where the main chat activity is occurring. But of course, if you want to be in pictures, you want to be on television, you know you do. Go to the Netcam Cineplex. Just click right there. And today, Dan and Deanna are dying to take your calls. Hi, guys. <laughs> they look so Worked up over the controversy. <laughs> you know. Do you deserve a CD with your system? Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. And as you yeah. can see, they're willing to stand was, up and shout. Dan was obviously right. up late last night playing Age of Empires 2. And earn yourself a fabulous magnet as seen on our fridge. Oh, you know. Oh, it's Baba Ram. That's right. Yount. And what we can't show you in that picture, folks, is that what David is holding in his hands is the remnants of his hair. Oh, which reminds me. We oh, we forgot. We can't. Yet. We can't do this. We our tradition uh, before the show starts. Many people don't know this. David, come here. We got to rub David. David's head. It's the traditional good luck charm you, before the mm. sure the show begins. Okay. Thank now, you. now we can. Now we can do a now show. Now we can go on with the show. <laughs> so let's talk to Michael, who's joining us on the ZDTV Freecom Netcam Network from Anderson. Hey, Michael. South Carolina. Hey. Hi, Michael. Hey, how you doing? What's your question, sir? Um, I have a Intel Celeron 333 uh, megahertz on a dual processor motherboard. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And I, I was trying to overclock it, but I have an award bias. 
and I cannot change the clock speed in the BIOS. Yeah, the I'm only motherboards oh. that allow you to do that are A-bit motherboards. They have a special modification they made to the BIOS they call the soft menu that allows you to do that in BIOS. On most motherboards, you don't do it in BIOS. You have to do it with jumpers. Yeah, you do it on the motherboard itself. Okay. So what you're going to look for is there's three, three jumper settings that you're going to look for on most motherboards. One is the motherboard uh, bus speed uh, frequency. One is the clock, uh, the uh, clock multiplier, mm -hmm. and one is the voltage, the chip voltage, okay? okay? So typically what you do with Celerons, you know, most Celerons are shipped on motherboards with 66 megahertz buses. So you want, you want, you want to do, um, almost always when you overclock a Celeron, is merely move the bus speed from 66 to 100. On your 333, hmm. uh, that'll, that'll make it uh, a 480 something. Okay. okay. Oh, there you go. And uh, and so that so you'll set the bus speed of 100. Now, one other thing you might want to do is bump the voltage. Try it without the voltage bumped. And see if it works. But sometimes and oftentimes you need to bump the voltage slightly to get the uh, processor to work at the higher speed. I'm not talking a lot. I'm talking go from uh, two volts to 2.1 volts. Okay. Like All right. And you know, you'll know if it's not working because it just it won't work. Won't work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying to get to see you on Greenville. Carolina. Sorry, we missed you. How far is that from a Anderson? Oh, only about 30 miles. Oh, oh man. We're sorry we missed you, Michael. Yeah, um, I was on a speech and debate tournament. Hey, how'd you oh, do? do? Oh, I did pretty good. I was in student congress. Good for you. Congratulations. All right. Uh, thank you. That's much more important than getting an autograph from some showbiz nothings that are going to be nobody in two <laughs> weeks. So I'm glad you uh, did that because that's, that's for your future, Michael. Michael, stay on the line and we will send you an autograph how picture. How about that? Okay, thanks. Okay. Thanks, and of Michael. course your magnet. Shall I just toss it to you now? Sure. Here we go. Catch. <laughs> Didn't even count that time. <laughs> All right. Nice job. Thanks, Michael. Thanks, thanks. Michael. See you later. See Good you. luck. Bye-bye. <laughs> After this break, folks, this week's Windows tip, I'm going to show you how to get easy access oh, to your wait a printer, minute. dial up menus. Showbiz has this. I was talking about Regis and Kathy Lee, not us. When the screen savers continue. I hope people didn't misunderstand friends. that. Making friends <laughs> all over the place. What are you talking about? Got a computer problem? Call for Help has your answers and tips with articles, searchable archives, and message boards. Go to ZDTV.com, click on Call for Help. We are bringing a lot of new people into the Linux fold. By putting Linux into the retail, you know, we're spreading the word, we're helping more people experience it. And they can play around with it, they can see what it's all about. Of all the flavors of Linux in the market, one stands out, Macmillan's Mandrake distribution. It was the editor's choice for product of the year at this year's Linux World. Macmillan's Mandrake was praised for one thing in particular, its breadth. The editors called it, quote, the distribution destined to please almost everyone. The benefit that Macmillan brings to the software is bundling of the pieces together to help the end user get from where they are to being productive with Linux. For example, in the starter kit, we offer the Complete Idiot's Guide, which takes them from cradle to grave, really, with Linux. For the more experienced user, right out of the box, they've got Apache server, they've got productivity apps, they've got the KDE and GNOME, graphical user interfaces. Uh, everything that they're used to will be there for them. Macmillan has given to the Linux community broad distribution. You've seen Linux in places that, um, that you might not otherwise have seen Linux. You've seen it in Best Buy and Costco and CompUSA in very broadly marketed ways. The more base users, the more pressure there'll be for application vendors to port their applications to Linux. The more pressure will be on corporations to adopt Linux as a desktop choice, put it in their server farms and so forth. It's important to note that we go back to Linux almost to its roots, to uh, producing books based on the first Linux distributions, to our current state of producing probably the largest group of software, books, and internet offerings based on Linux available. We tested uh, the Macmillan offering side by side with several competitor products. One, it's less expensive, and two, Macmillan adds a lot of documentation and they're able to leverage the fact that they're one of the largest computer book publishers there are. So you get a lot for your money. Our goal is, is really to be the one-stop shop for Linux. So whether you're looking for the operating system itself, applications, databases, utilities, games, books and electronic books. We really want to be all things Linux. 
It bears noting that Macmillan's Mandrake distribution also won the Editor's Choice Award for server distribution. It's yet another reason that Macmillan USA is the place for Linux. I'm Angela Wethington, and thanks for watching. For a limited time, register to win the complete Linux operating system 6.5 by visiting www.placewherelinux.com or dialing toll-free 877-PLC-4LNX. Hey, it's time for the weekly Windows tip. This week, we're going to add menus for easy access. Yes, it's menus of pop and We're going to say, of course, gracias to viewer Mike Ferguson, thank you, Mike. And also thanks to PC Magazine's Neil J. Rubin King for helping us round it out a little bit. So what we're going to show you is how to get... Now, we've shown you the control panel, and we'll have the printer's menu and a couple of others to make a pop-up list of everything inside. Now, first of all, let's explain how this works. Normally, you're looking at a folder, like this is your program's folder on your start menu. But this control panel is actually a system object. So we have to figure out how to make Windows Query a system object, or in this case, the applet, the control panel applet. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. The easy way, of course, is the Tweak UI way. So you go down, open Tweak UI. If you go to your desktop tab, you'll see here a bunch of different options for icons that you can add to your desktop. Now, there may or may not be a checkbox next to them. No big deal. If you see it here, just hit the Create as File button. And then when you get a window that comes up, just tell it to go to your C Windows Start Menu folder. And it'll say Create as Object here. What a great idea. And well, that boom. makes it one of those pop-up menus. And like that, that makes it one of those pop-up menus. That's a great idea. Now, sometimes this does not work. So if this doesn't work, you have to do what? A registry hack! Yay! No, yes, you do? You do, but it's, it's well, very Well, we didn't easy. do it for the, uh, for the control panel. No, we, d we did do it. broke our babushka. Oh, I'm sorry, you don't actually need a registry hack. You can get things from the registry to do it with. Here, let me show oh, you. Oh, I see. You get the information from the registry. From the registry. I got it. Okay. Now, what you do is go to the Start menu, right-click, and hit Open. This will, of course, just take you right there. Or in Explorer, go to C, Windows, Start menu. Same deal. Just go to File and Create a New Folder. Now, what you do in the place of the new folder, if you look, I have a text file. What you need, as you can see, I have printers, done, and history. And following it, you have the word, and a period, and a bracket, no space, plus this big, long number. This is the GUID. It's the globally unique identifier for this applet. So what you're going to do is take it, and here I've typed these in advance, so I'm just going to copy and paste. We'll do it with printers. Copy it, and then the name of your new folder. You make it the name of your new folder. Hit paste, hit enter, and it's printers. Boom. Now I'll show you, if we go to the start menu now, we have start, printers, and my printers come up. I can add a printer or go to the options for my printer. Now, folks, we've tried this for dial-up networking, and I will tell you that it has worked. I have the GUID right, but I have not been able to get this to work on this particular machine. So let's do it with history instead. You can also do it with your internet history. So you do it again, file, new, folder, go here to your internet history. Here we go, copy it, paste it, hit enter. There's my internet history. So now in my start menu, I come up here and look, broken into three weeks ago, here's where I went on the web today, here's where I went last week. It's all there right from the start menu. Isn't that cool? Yeah, I like that. that I absolutely really love handy. this one. Now, on every machine I use, w this is an old Windows tip, we do the, I do the control panel. Always do, that's, yeah. You'll find that in our older Windows tips, because that's really handy to have all the control panels pop it's up It's definitely like one of the best yeah. ones. Now, if you want to play around with different applets that you can put, or different system objects that you can put here, if you run regedit, and you go to H key, local machine, software, classes, CLSID. That will give you all the list of GUIDs that Windows uses and the different items, but most of them, folks, won't really work as well as history, printers, control panel, and if you can get it to work, dial-up networking. So for all of the long ID numbers here, either search your registry or visit our website at thescreensavers.com for all the instructions for this tip, including all these long, long, long numbers that go in the brackets and all of our Windows tips. Very cool. Hey, everybody, we're going to send Kate to chat, so you can ask her how to do that yourself. Join me in up chat. Join next me. from our friends at PC Magazine, they're going to tell us about their findings on how to get better battery life uh, on your digital cameras. These things just hmm. drain those batteries dry. Which batteries stood the test of time, and how do you get the most out of them? You'll find out when the screensavers continue. Ooh, my battery's running out.
Thanks, dude. Morning, Nate. Java? Does your ideal job exist? Why not find out? It's free and discreet. Techies.ZDNet.com, your local career source. At this very moment, Egghead.com is hosting live online auctions where you can bid on name brand products in real time. You're looking at actual items streamed from the auction block to your TV. Hurry to the live auctions at Egghead.com now and bid for yourself because at Egghead Auctions, real time goes real fast. Egghead.com. Shop three times smarter. Have you always wanted to be a television star like Regis and Kathy Lee? Come be a part of our live ZDTV television production from the floor of Convex Fall 99 in Las Vegas. We are giving away 150 pairs of tickets to the Comdex exhibits and our studio audience to register to win. Go to our website and click on the Comdex tickets button. You'll get to this page right here and you'll have a chance to uh, get in that giveaway. I want you to do that too because we want to see you on the show floor rooting and cheering and applauding and all that stuff. It's a screensavers.com for your free Comdex tickets. As I said, 150 pair to give away this week, and I want you to win them. If, if you're going to be, I should say, don't do this if you're not going to be in Las Vegas on November 15th, 16th, and 17th, okay? Time to talk about battery life. I know, you know, it's such a pain when your batteries run out, and they always run out just at the most important time, don't they? Time to check in with our friends at PC Magazine. <laughs> Joining us right now, Jay Yang, project leader at PC Magazine, live via Netcam from the PC Magazine Labs in New York, New York. Staying late, Jay. Thank you. Hello, Leo. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Christina DeNike says hi. Oh, hello, Christina. <laughs> she works with us often on, uh, on uh, ZDTV. So let's talk about battery life. First of all, anybody who's used a digital camera knows that those things drain batteries faster than any other device I know of. What is, it, what is a common amount of time you can get out of you know, camera uh, we found, on average, about 200 shots you can expect from these that's, digital cameras. That's nothing! What about rechargeables? Can I just use rechargeables, or are they much worse? Yeah, several cameras uh, began shipping with rechargeable batteries. Yeah. Vendors uh, began to realize that with these digital cameras, the battery life is a problem. Sure. So uh, a lot of vendors began shipping with rechargeables. And I mean, they are um, better in a way that uh, you don't have to go through so many batteries and spend a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, a digital camera is still cheaper than getting all the prints and everything, even if you're buying new batteries every 200 shots. But I worry about the landfill issue of, you know, thousands of people, millions of people going through these batteries like crazy. Oh, yes. So first thing you did is uh, you tested the, uh, the replaceable batteries. Uh, yes. which, which, which batteries did you test? We tested Kodak Photolife, Duracell, those common AA alkaline variety, right. and Energizer. Okay, so the traditional just alkaline batteries and then a special battery for photos. And this is, by the way, the Kodak Photolife is not just for digital cameras. These are for any uh, camera battery. Uh, and it's because flashes are drain batteries. They, they need, you need that juice, right? Yes, they, they are specifically designed for cameras uh, that are considered high drain devices. They require a sudden burst of current because when you take a shot using the flash, right. it, 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 it draws a current at a rapid rate. So did batteries designed for photos do significantly better than just standard alkaline batteries? Yes, they do. Uh, our finding was that uh, Kodak Photolife, which was specifically designed for cameras, uh, they uh, did better in high drain cameras like uh, uh, we used as an example Kodak DC260. Right. And they also did better in uh, cameras that are less demanding on batteries like Nikon Coolpix 900. Now, I know as I'm looking on the back of these photo lights, they're lithium batteries. Is that one of the reasons they're better? Yes. Uh, lithium b batteries, we found, uh, usually do better in okay. our battery life test. Uh, is this the same lithium ion technology that's used in rechargeables for laptops, things like that? Uh, they're similar, but not quite. Th this lithium battery is not rechargeable. It's not rechargeable. Yeah, okay. Good. These are more expensive or no? They are slightly more expensive. How much um, more? It, and they're not as common as Duracell or Energizer. I, you know what? I know that because we said we, we had a hard time finding these things. Yes. We had yes. to shop all over. Are they 
how can I put this? Is the additional price worth it based on the number ex of extra shots that I'm going to get? Yeah, we think so. It, it does give you uh, more battery life, um, and we think it's worth it. But the problem is you're not going to find them at an airport gift shop right. or your neighborhood drugstore. Right. So you're, uh, a lot of times you're stuck with uh, Duracells or Energizers. Traditionally, rechargeable are not great in high-drain devices um, like cameras. Um, can I just buy rechargeable, uh, you know, AA batteries and use those? Are they going to work all right? Uh, yes, in a lot of cases you can. Uh, you can buy those 1.2-volt, uh, 1.5-volt, right. but you would uh, need to consult the vendor's uh, documentation all right. on that. Now, the, 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 you come at this from two angles in the article, not just from the battery angle, but also what you can do with your camera. First of all, some cameras are worse than others, and then what you can do with your camera to improve life. Uh, this is the Nikon Coolpix 950, which, which pretty much everybody agrees uh, is one of the best uh, uh, two megapixel cameras out there. I mean, just a great camera. Yes. Uh, you, you tested it, and what other cameras did you test? Uh, we tested uh, several others uh, in this for this story. We tested 20 cameras in all. Wow. Which one is the best battery life-wise? Uh, we like the Olympus D400 Zoom. It okay. uh, gave us 460 shots. Oh, that's substantially. That's twice what the what you quoted. Oh yes. yes. Wow. Twice, uh, more than twice the average. That's amazing. What else did you like? Uh, we also uh, Olympus's uh, T2000 also gave us about f over 400 shots, and Sanyo VPC Z400 gave us over 3,000. I'm sorry, 300 shots. What are they doing differently to make them so much better? Uh, some are rechargeable, and some uh, use more efficient uh, LCD viewfinder right. and CCD array. Okay, let's talk about. I mean, uh, if I've got a camera already, and I'm not, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't look at your results before I bought the camera. Is there some? Are there some things I can do? The ways I use the camera that are going to give me better battery life? Yes, if you're concerned about the battery life, um, let's say you're going on an expedition and you, you forgot to carry a lot of batteries. What you can do is just turn off the LCD. These yeah. digital cameras all come with optical, most of them come with optical viewfinders. This is the Coolpix. This is a perfect example. It has over here a optical view, standard uh, camera view. They, see, they keep moving the camera. There it is. The standard uh, camera viewfinder that you look through, it's just optical, as you said, plus the LCD. And you're saying, use this, because this uses so much power. Exactly. Is that, is that the problem? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, the LCD viewfinder does train a lot of power. Okay. What else can I do? I guess not using the flash probably saves some power. Uh, you can turn off the camera when, when you're not using. Turn it off. That's good. And a lot of cameras uh, do come with uh, uh, power save mode, and they do go off automatically when you're not using them. And don't play with the zoom feature so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's a good example. If I turn on uh, this Kodak DC-260, uh, the very th first thing that happens when you turn it on, let me see if I can get this thing on, is, <laughs> unless the battery's dead, is this thing zooms out. And, of course, that starts to, and that, there it is. And as I, as I zoom in and out, of course, if you, it makes perfect sense that that's going to use up a lot of uh, battery life. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, a pr order of priority, LCD first? Yes, LCD first. Okay. S power saving mode second? Uh, power saving mode, uh, I do recommend, it should be always on. Right. Always on. Okay. Yes. Great. And then stop zooming in and out. Right. <laughs> All right. Hey, great. Some great tips. It's a good article. It's, uh, it's part of uh, the PC Magazine uh, that came out just, uh, just the other day. And, uh, and if you use a digital camera, or there it is, the one that says throw out your software. If you use a digital camera, or if you're thinking about buying one, this is something you'd want to check. Actually, especially if you're thinking about buying one, you might want to check the ratings on battery life. I think when I talk to digital camera users, that seems to be the number one complaint. Everybody loves digital cameras, but almost everybody says, but they use batteries like crazy. Yes. So this is something you can do to make it better. Hey, Jake, really appreciate you joining us. I know you're staying a little bit late tonight, so thanks for doing that, okay? You're very welcome. I appreciate it. Jay uh, Yang is project leader for PC Magazine. It's the November 2nd issue of PC Magazine. Uh, the article is a snapshot look at battery life. And if you check out our website at thescreensavers.com, Jay's written an article that, that synopsizes all his findings here. I think these cameras are a revolution, uh, in it, but if there's a downside, it's going to be the millions of batteries we find in the landfills. So I think it's important to talk about things we can do to eliminate that, all right? Hey, don't start flipping. We're not done yet. Still to come on this very show, what is NetBuoy and why would you want a network using it? Stick around and find out. Also, more answers to your toughest computer problems. 
and how you can uh, learn to expand your handheld computer's capabilities. All that and more as the screensavers rolls on. Now smile. People all around the world are demanding their rights. ZD TV, hey. ZD TV, the first 24-hour channel for computing and the internet. Demand it now. Uh, I use the internet very strongly to uh, get elected. I go online for South Park. I use uh, the internet a lot. Uh, lately, I've been downloading a lot of science. ZD TV. ZD TV, amaze yourself. You're watching ZD TV. This program is sponsored in part by Crucial Technology, the memory experts. HP, IBM, Gateway, and Apple all use their memory. And now you can, too, at Crucial.com. on ZDTV. Need extra cash? Well, honey, I can't help you, but the Money Machine is now answering your financial questions live. Go to their site to find out how you can be on the air. Witness Liam Makelam's taxi cab confessions. Internet Tonight is riding shotgun with a high-tech hack who travels with a webcam. All right, kids, Comdex is coming, and we're giving away 300 tickets. Go to ZDTV.com all week for your chance to win. That's what's happening at ZDTV and ZDTV.com. Amaze yourself. Don't touch that dial. Screensavers will be right back in a few moments. Guys hate shopping, right? Well, let me tell you, big guys hate it even more. Department stores? In my size? Then I found the King Size Catalog. It's free. They've got a terrific selection of clothing at great prices. And the best part? Every item is designed just for big guys. Tall guys or big and tall guys. It's just a phone call away. Or I can browse their website. Everything I need. Underwear to outerwear. No more tight waists or naked wrists. No more, I'm sorry, we don't have that in your size. And King Size offers brand names. The latest styles and colors for every season. Outstanding casual clothes. Sharp looking work clothes. Even shoes that really fit. If you're a big or tall guy, call for your free catalog or jump on our website, King Size, your size. Hey, please don't tell my wife, but I kind of like shopping now. Just imagine being linked to a source of information, to a global internet adventure. Now, there's a new television network, ZDTV, your home for entertainment, explaining the power of computers and the internet. ZDTV. Amaze yourself. Welcome back to the Screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte. And I'm Pete Patello. Thank you for joining us. Oh, yeah. Today in the chat room, do you deserve a Windows installed? In? Now, tell us the bad part. Jump on in. Microsoft talking about making you use a recovery CD instead of including a full Windows 98 system CD. Which a lot of companies purchased. A lot of companies do this already. They include a recovery disk and they don't include a Windows disk. Microsoft, according to a top secret internal yes. document Sources that's been released. Say uh, says that they're going to start requiring that OEMs, the original equipment mm -hmm. manufacturers that sell PCs to you, they're going to start requiring that they not ship, probably they'd, probably they'd allow them to if they paid extra money, you know, not ship a, window, a real know. Windows install disk, but ship only a restore disk uh, inside there. No, I'm sure they'd make it an option. Would you like a Windows install disk for an additional $90? You know? Oh, yeah, great. Even though you've already paid for the license? Now, here's the interesting thing. <laughs> according to this, according to this uh, story, well, you paid for the license. Remember, you haven't paid 90 bucks for the license. You've paid OEM rates for the okay, license. Okay, so you've got a discount. Considerably less. Right. They're like 10 or 15 or 20 bucks. Now, here's the interesting thing. According to this document, they're also going to BIOS lock. Now, this, this is the part that really... This which I think is very insidious. So they'll actually check what machine it was installed on and will not install on another machine. You will not be able to restore onto any other machine. Again, the whole point for Microsoft is 
to eliminate piracy. People what? are taking the Windows disk that they got with their computer and giving it to their friends and their family. But Leo, Here, install Windows. Leo, what happens when I flash my BIOS? Well, on a BIOS locked recovery I think, CD. I think you'd be all right, but uh, okay. it just depends on what they're doing. There's all sorts of ways of determining what your computer is. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I would be shocked if they made it so that if you flash your BIOS, suddenly Windows didn't run. Well, no, I've just meant you couldn't use the recovery disk after I think, you flashed the BIOS. I think you can. It could I, happen. I think you can. I think because uh -huh. what they would do is probably look at the, uh, the ID, the processor ID, or some other way of... Uh, what they're going to do is ID the machine and lock yeah. it to that particular machine. Look, there's just got to be a better way. The whole thing's a bad idea, obviously. Uh, I understand Microsoft's desire to protect pi themselves from piracy. And respect it utterly. But I think as a user, you need and you want the Windows disk. We talk all the time about reinstalling Windows. How are you supposed to reinstall Windows with a restore disk? All you can do with a restore disk is completely wipe your hard drive off and put Windows on top of it. Exactly. That's not quite the restore you we had in mind about, when no. you had to do a, just a quick now, reinstall. Now, we should say it? that Microsoft has not announced this officially. Oh, no. it, it may be uh, in error. And they were going to do it as of November 1st, you know, but yeah. the OEM supposedly all the OEM manufacturers complained vociferously, so they pushed it back to January Let's first. hope they keep complaining, and you should complain too, or, or maybe not. Or maybe not. Well, we want to know what, well, you can see what we think. We want to know what you think. It's not always all about us, folks. You know, it's hard to admit it, but it's true. Take our web poll at thescreensavers.com while you're there. When click on the. I get to do this. Hey, hey man. <laughs> hey, come off. Excuse me. I thought the wig would come right off. No, no, that would be yours. <laughs> oh, no, touch it. Uh -huh. I just got it done. While you're there, click on the talk back feature to express your opinion to the rest of the screensavers community. See how everybody feels. Yeah, I think you, you know, I think oh, you Oh, you know, you got a flap loose right here. Look no, at I this. Think you gotta, it's not, I think you loosened it. You can also chat with us, chat.zdnet. Dot, dot com. com. Hi, chat room. Hope you guys are having fun in there. Wade, does it look straight, Wade? Wade, Wade joins us on the ZDTV 3Com Netcam Network from good. Waverly, Alabama. Hey, Wade. Hi, Wade. Hi. Oh, Wade, Wade's got his wig on lower. <laughs> He's good to go. Hey, Wade, how are you? I'm fine. What's up? Yeah, your wig's completely flipped around. <laughs> <laughs> I just cut my hair. <laughs> what can we do for you, Wade? Well, I'm thinking about networking our computers via Ethernet. And I was wondering if we could share our internet connection through the Ethernet. Ethernet. Ethernet, ethernet connection. Yeah. Uh, we've got a um, couple of Macs and a PC running Windows. Sure. Mm -hmm. One one system is going to have to be the gateway to the world. Mm hmm Okay. Okay. So like a proxy server situation. Yeah, it's basically a proxy server. So uh, would you have a preference? Which one is the one that's connected? What, what kind of internet connection do you have? A dial-up or a, a Dial-up. Dial-up. Hmm. That makes yeah. it a little more complicated. We can't get cable networking out here we're out in the country kind of in the boonies okay, out there can't get yeah. DSL out there either so. it's a little trickier with uh, dial-up as opposed to a full-time connection because of course anybody wants to get on the computer is going to have to get that computer to dial out right right and that's now if you were in a heterogeneous all windows environment i would say the solution there is windows 98 se with its mm -hmm. internet it's connection, connection sharing. Share. yeah because yeah, what happens there is it automatically will dial out uh, now i'm going to recommend that here's what i'm going to recommend you do I want you to put uh, Windows 98. Is that the one with the modem? I'm hoping. Uh, well, we, all, we have modems on all our computers. Okay. But okay. I'll be on one computer and, and something will come up that, well, that would look better on, on Windows. So you want to jump over like, to Windows. And then yeah, see, then I have to hop over to Windows and, and, and then, then dial out again. So yeah, you're designing I, web pages and you want to check them out in different browsers and different operating systems. Right, and, and sometimes Java okay. will do that to me. Uh, mm -hmm. the, easiest, the easiest way to do this is to uh, run a program on your Windows machine called a proxy server. There's a good mm -hmm. free one that we recommend that actually can be configured to auto-dial out so that even if you get on the Mac and you ask for the data, the, the, the thing will automatically pick up the phone and dial out on Windows. And that's a free program called Proxy I. Oh, from Analog, from Analog X. X. Okay. He's updating. Unfortunately, Mark, uh, Analog X... Uh, lost his hard drive. Oh no! Yeah, and a lot of code was on there. He's gonna. He is planning on doing an update to this proxy server this Friday. But if he doesn't get it up, it'll be uh, next Friday. But he's had some nice features to it. It really is a nice piece Here of software. Go. So you go to the network download section. It's a tiny little thing. What it does, it runs all the time on Windows, and you set up. Basically, what you'll do is you'll set up Windows with a real connection, and then you'll set up all the other computers with a um, with a dummy Probably. IP address uh, and say, uh, when you want to get the data, ask for it from this address. And it'll go to your proxy server, your Windows machine, and it'll get, if it's not online, it'll get it to dial up. 
uh, and uh, you'll be on the net no matter what machine you're using. And I'm pretty sure it will work, I'm, I'm positive it will work on Macs too because it's just a, basically a TCP IP request. You know, I got that question on Friday and I forgot about this free version from Analog X. I was thinking about using one. Wingate. There's a lot of different the commercial page. programs out there, but this is the, this is the one that's free. Uh, everybody I know who uses it is very happy with it. It's almost transparent. It just sits there in your system tray. It's easy and it's one. tiny. That's yeah, our very, favorite it's thing. It's very small. Very quick download. Okay. Okay. So give that one a try, and I'm pretty sure it'll work. You have an oddball system si situation because you have a heterogeneous or a, a, uh, a, hum a hetero. Wait, homogeneous <laughs> is the heter. You have a heterogeneous network. Right. Well, we're we really Mac users. users. There huh? you go. Uh, we got the Windows machine, so we could also put Linux and be on it. Ah, excellent. Oh my well, that's another way to go. Of course, is to dedicate Linux. one to Linux and have yeah. it do doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but this this is good. I don't know. Of, um, there probably are things on the Mac that will do the same thing going the other way. I just don't know what they are. So, but that's what you that's Dave what you need to look for something. is a proxy server. Okay. Proxy server. It acts as your intermediary between the sub network, the internal network, and the outside world. Okay. Alrighty. Okie doke. Okay, Wade, Wade. Will you do us a favor now, please? Sure. What happens if they say no, man? Will you take us to we break? We actually have to do some work around oh, here. Man. Okay, thanks, Kate and Leo. Stay tuned for Sumi Doss and her magical expanding handheld computers Careful. when the screensavers continues. Did you do the Sumi? Do the Sumi Doss. The Screensavers is sponsored by Gateway. Gateway speaks to 50,000 people a day. Call, click, or come in and connect with us. Mom, did that file open yet? No. Buy a Gateway PC with the Yourware program and you can trade it in toward the purchase of a new one in two years. Mom! So you'll never have an old computer. Call now, get a Gateway PC with an Intel Pentium 3 processor and a printer for $38 a month. of a button. Compaq can give your family whatever they want this holiday. Just get the Compaq Presario 5700N Holiday Bundle with a super fast Intel Celeron processor. It's only $899, including 15-inch monitor and color printer. Call 1-888-830-5163 to get one now. With Compaq innovations like one-touch internet access, it's the fastest and easiest way to get whatever you want. The Compaq Presario 5700N Holiday Bundle with Intel Celeron Processor. Just $899, plus free unlimited internet access. What more could you want? I want a new car. <laughs> For details, call 1-888-830-5163 today. Test your tech knowledge by taking this week's Screensaver Super Geek Challenge, all about cascading style sheets, sponsored by Macmillan USA, the place for Linux. When using CSS, how do you define individual box elements? Accept this Super Geek Challenge, always available at thescreensavers.com. No, no folks, idea. I asked Leo that question. He's I like, I don't know. We guessed right, though. Yeah, we did. We guessed right. We used deductive reasoning, hint, hint, hint. Yeah. And, of course, congratulations to... Oh. Roslyn from Richardson, Texas. What are you doing? I'm just signing up my hand. I'm sorry. I'm trying to congratulate <laughs> Roslyn here. Is this our Roslyn? I hope it's our Roslyn who, in fact, sent me. Is it R O S L Y N? Yes, I think it's our Roslyn, our Roslyn. who sent me a fabulous Judy mug that me I too. use. Judy Garland mug I use every single day. Totally love it. She and, sent you know, me a Liza mug. Oh, that's no, right. She sent me a Linux mug. Sent you a Linux mug. And of course, Richardson, Texas, where I spent many summers as a child growing up. Anyway, take the Super Geek uh, quiz and fill out the form after you've taken said quiz for your chance to win a Screensavers t shirt or hat. Let me just attach the snap here. It's making me crazy. Okay. Anyway, as we promised, here's a shirt for David. Here's. 
Here's Sumidas with a here's Sumidas with an ex look at the expanding possibilities of the visor handheld computer on today's fresh gear. <laughs> It looks like a palm, it works like a palm, but what are those cards that slide into the top? Springboard module expansion slots offer greater options and flexibility to the handspring visor, that less expensive Palm Pilot look-alike. Several companies attended the recent Palm Source Conference in Silicon Valley to show off what they have in store for visor owners. InnoGear has three springboard modules in the works, all slated to ship in the first quarter of next year. The InfoMit will turn your visor into an alphanumeric pager. Expect it to cost about $50, not including the paging service. The six-pack combo card manages to pack six features all into one springboard. A 56K modem, cell phone modem connection, a voice recorder, flash and vibrate alarms, and eight megabytes of flash memory. Price for the six-pack has yet to be determined, but should be reasonable. InnoGear's Mini Jam will turn a handspring visor into a portable MP3 player and voice recorder. A couple of different internal memory models will be available, including a 64 meg version with an external memory slot for multimedia cards. It should be priced around $225. The base model will have no internal memory and is expected to cost about $100. The Mini Jam runs off the visor's batteries but has DC power in. The module will also come with real jukebox software for the visor, which includes on-screen controls, playlists, and a screen for artist and album information. InnoGear wasn't the only company at the Palm Source Conference with Springboard coming attractions. Widcom's Blue Connect module will allow visors to communicate with other devices and each other using Bluetooth technology. To demonstrate Blue Connect's potential, Widcom set up a wireless chat between two visors. The range was only about 30 feet, but we were able to carry on a chat pretty easily. Eventually, syncing your visor up with your computer or notebook, even downloading phone numbers to your cell phone, could be done wirelessly with the Blue Connect module. These are just a few of the springboards currently in the works. We can expect more modules in the months to come that will expand the visor's possibilities. You know, that wireless chat thing would be... What would you do with that? Why you, would you, you could, you could pass in notes in meetings, you know? Oh. Ken's a dork. That would be <laughs> handy. Totally. He, you know, it's a productivity tool, people. I'm taking notes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> of course, you get busted all the time, because you think you look like you're taking notes on your Clio, and then you go, oh, man, did you see the score on this game last night? <laughs> yeah, right. You bust yourself. I should really yourself. turn the sound off before I play Pac-Man. Yeah, that. see? Palm. You can catch new Fresh Gear of Friday afternoon at 1, 30, 12, 30 Central, right here on ZDTV. So we got an email from Keith in Nashville, North Carolina. He says, I currently have two PCs, each with their own IP addresses from my cable company. I'd like to be able to share files and printers between the PCs using NetBuoy. Is this possible? If so, how? We'll show you the whys, the wherefores, and the hows when the screensavers continues. John Jeffries, and I'm here to talk with you about People PC. What is People PC, you ask? It's simple. One, a new brand name PC replaced every three years. Two, unlimited internet. Three, in home service. Yep, if all else fails, they come to you. Four, great deals on stuff you like from places you know. All for $24.95 a month. That's it. Let's review. For about the cost of internet service alone over here, you get unlimited internet, a new computer, in-home service, and great deals over here. All for $24.95 a month. How? Strength in numbers, my friends. Folks, I'm Mark John Jeffries for our People PC. Thank you, and God bless. We got an email from Keith in Asheville, North Carolina. He asks, I currently have two PCs, each with their own IP address for my cable company. I'd like to be able to share files and printers between the PCs using NetBuoy. Is it possible? So how? Very, very easy. First, let's explain what NetBuoy is. I think that's a weird name. NetBuoy. 
Bleh. And it stands for uh, NetBIOS Extended User Interface. It's for sharing on an intranet or on a small, single-segmented LAN between your own little tiny network. In the beginning, network. there were computers just all by themselves. And people said, oh, no. we would like to share data or communicate between computers. And it really, in the very early days of, of, of networking, something called NetBIOS was created, which is a way network input-output system was a way of sharing data between two computers. NetBuoy is a more recent version. It's actually now not used all that much because most people use internet protocols mm -hmm. to, uh, to communicate. But you can certainly use NetBuoy. In fact, we found if you're sharing between two computers on a segment, as we would on the set, NetBuoy turns out to be the most kind of it's so efficient easy to do. easy way to do it. It's the way we would recommend if you have an internal network like you do doing it. So let's show him what he has to do. First of all, he has to go into his network control panel. Yep, go into the network control panel. And basically, all you have to do is add it as a protocol. So add protocols, and you'll see and under Microsoft. And then go here to Microsoft, you'll see NetBuoy down here at the bottom, right there. Now, we've already added it, so I will show it to you. Yeah, th there will be a restart, and we just did it ahead of time. So we and it'll it bind it. itself to your dial-up adapter, to your NIC. We don't have VPN on this machine. In this case, you want to bind it to your NIC, of course, your network interface card. Yep, as we and have there here. it is. Take a look at the properties. And uh, you'll see that, fi oh, that's the other thing, if you press Oh, yeah, sorry, we, we have, have to, to turn file sharing. File sharing have to be on. enabled. Yes, yes. Only okay. if you want to share printers do you turn that on. Right, we have okay. it turned on just for fun here. And then you could see that it was, bo it was bound to a file and print sharing. Yep. And then that's about it. You would need to then share the hard drives that you wanted to have be visible uh, now, on various computers. That? Apparently we didn't do that, so we can't show you what it looks like. But if you right-click on a drive and select sharing, you'll see it's very easy to share as... You would name it, you could put a comment, and you also have access types, read-only, full access, or password. What I'd recommend if you're going to do this, especially with your system, since you're on a network, that you use passwords to protect yourself, because otherwise somebody just come in over your cable modem mm -hmm. and, and log into that drive and take whatever's on it. Yes. So don't share your whole, I wouldn't recommend sharing your whole drive, just share a folder, and there I would make go. sure you use passwords when you're sharing it. Now let's explain what's going on here, because there is one little uh, thing, uh, this is an opportunity to kind of talk about there's often confusion between Ethernet and NetBuoy and TCP IP and what exactly they all do and how they work. And we're going to explain it using this uh, nesting babushka doll, this Russian thing. It's and it, from it, Russia. It really is a, it's a really good way to describe it because basically you have layers. Uh, if you think about it, the f there are actually seven networking layers, but I'm going to condense it. We only have four dolls, so I'm going to condense it. <laughs> the, <laughs> layer one is, uh, is the hardware layer, the actual physical. Oh, where did it go? There we go. Isn't that kind of cute? A funny little doll. He's like a little general. Reminds me of my son. So there we go. That's the. Uh, this is the hardware a beard? layer. Yeah. He's only like that. four. It was his Halloween cousin. Oh, okay. So uh, you have a physical connection. Usually it would be the Cat5 wire that's connected between from Nick to Nick. That's the hardware All right. layer. On top of the hardware layer, or the physical layer, I guess is probably the, the more apt term. On top of the physical layer is the data link layer. So it's going to ride on top of the hardware layer. And it is actually the description of what the packets look like. It's, it's the packet description. Remember we talked about setting the maximum transmission unit? The MTU. The packet size. Mm -hmm. That's where it's set. So it helps it identify even what a packet looks like right. and how big it is. It's set in that second layer, the data link layer. Now NetBuoy resides in the third layer, the network layer. And that is the network protocols that describes how the, pa the packets, which are riding on the hardware, mm -hmm. are communica the communication itself. How is they up. get from right. here to here. Now, now does TCP IP also go in the that's same way? IP layer? does. TCP is above this. Ah. This is where TCP sits. NetBuoy sits in the same layer as IP. Now, there's one problem with NetBuoy, which you pointed out, which is it's not routable. Right. You can only leave it on one segment. So it's really good for a local area network mm -hmm. where everything's all in the same segment. Because it's not routable, you can't send data outside your segment or across the internet. Good news, you can have, and this is where the layer model gets a little confusing, even though IP and NetBuoy are on the same layer, you can have NetBuoy ride on IP so mm -hmm. that it's then routable using TCP. Ah, yes, over when you the add internet. that, you generally add TCP IP. Yeah, you'll need here. both, in other words. You need to bind it to, to route the TCP over the net. IP. Now, since you're saying you're only setting it over your, uh, over your uh, local area network, you don't need to worry about that. No. Okay. Now, there are three more layers on top of here that get to at the final layer. The application layer is where FTP is and HTTP is and all that stuff. It, so they, it creates more capabilities as you go along. Okay. But and it's important to step. understand when somebody's saying Ethernet, they're not necessarily specifying a network protocol. They're merely specifying the uh, hardware and then maybe layer two, which is the packeting system, and that's it. 
And layer three is then when you have network start net talking about network protocol. Okay. And that's where NetBuoy sits. All right. In the third one. And there you have. Right there. What makes you want to. The one with the mustache. Dance with the with the uh, what is it? Husser. Hussars. Yes. You know. All right. Let's take a call from Marshall. Men are from Mars. Women dance with hussars. Isn't that a book? Something like that. Men Marshall. behave badly. Joining us on the phone from <laughs> Ruston, Louisiana. Marshall, when we have a couple minutes to take your call, so let's just kick right in. What hey, Marshall. Go ahead, Marshall. Go, Marshall. Go. Hey, Marshall. Well, well you know what? Freaked him out. It's not going to take too long to answer this call. No. <laughs> um, the answer, Marshall. <laughs> Glad is we were able to help, yes. Marshall. Mm -hmm. We've saved another screen. Ding, 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 ding. We're Fine. winners. Man, I'm working up a sweat. Well. Thanks Can we talk some more in. about the network layers? Yeah, you know, if you want, I could walk over there and install NetBuoy on that machine. Let's tell them how to record their own emails. All right. Move right along here. Okay, thanks for calling in there. Record your own back. video emails. Send them to tssvmail at zdtv.com. Instructions and your scripts and Marshall are waiting at thescreensavers.com. That's Actually, where he is, right there. I think Hi. we have somebody, don't we? Just Who click on participate. Email? Yes, thank goodness that Glenn did this. Thank you, Glenn. Here's Glenn. Hello, I'm Glenn from Loveland, Ohio. Kate and Leo will be right back when the Screensavers continues here on ZDTV. Amaze yourself. A daily dose of the best from the net. All right, here are some burning questions for you. Why is real network snooping around your PC? What do monks do in their spare time? Why did the cow cross the road? For one reason or another. Internet Tonight. Coming up next on ZDTV. Remember when mom put your art project on the fridge? We'll put your art on TV. Log on to ZDTV.com now and paint our logo. ZDTV.com. Amaze yourself. When it comes to performance, the Omnibook 4150 from Hewlett Packard defines the very concept. Integrating a broad range of proven high performance mobile PC technologies in a slim, lightweight design, the 4150 defines the perfect blend of power and portability at a defining price just $23.49. The Omnibook 4150 with the Intel Mobile Pentium 2 processor. Once again, Hewlett Packard defies definition. this very moment, Egghead.com is hosting live online auctions where you can bid on name brand products in real time. You're looking at actual items streamed from the auction block to your TV. Hurry to the live auctions at Egghead.com now and bid for yourself because at Egghead Auctions, real time goes real fast. Egghead.com. Shop three times smarter. There is no way you can know where in the hell he was dropped. He could be anywhere. And frankly, sir, we go sending some sort of rescue mission, flat-heading throughout swarms of German reinforcements all along our axis of advance. They're going to be KIA, too. The boy's alive. We are going to send somebody to find him. Call now to order six great channels of HBO The Works for just $10.99 a month. The most recognized name in the history of professional wrestling, Hollywood Hogan. Get the real story from the man who made the sport what it is today and witness his transformation from wrestling's ultimate hero to leader of the NWO. It's Hollywood Hogan, Why I Rule the World, available throughout the month of November on pay-per-view. Use your remote to order. Check your electronic program guide for dates and times. Mad out the stairs da, da, da. using hey. blue screen. Yeah. Look, no hands. There's no way they can do that otherwise because they'd be falling on their. We're professionals. <laughs> Welcome back to the screensavers. <laughs> I am Ekaterina Botelova. And I'm Regis Philbin. <laughs> this is the part of the show when we like to share yeah. some of the hundreds of emails we receive every day. Oh, Reg. On the screensavers. Oh, oh, we should have been Regis and Kathy oh, Lee for Halloween. Wouldn't that have been fun? You know, Regis and, and Kathy Lee were each other for Halloween. We could have been each other. That would have oh, been that really... Oh, I wasn't here for Halloween. Did you do anything on Friday? No. Did Martin dress up or anything? No. 
Actually, actually, folks, that was not Martin on the show on Friday. That was actually was Leo dressed up. Fooled like you, didn't Martin. I? Ah! Hey, hey, and actually, you. I took the day off. That was Michaela Pereira hosting the show. So I hope she did a good job and she knew the answers to the questions. Of course she did. No wonder she slapped. She's Michaela Pereira. Roy Harris writes, he's a CPA in uh, somewhere. <laughs> I've seen you suggest using the DOS X copy command to duplicate hard drives. As I recall, last time I did that, I lost my long file names. Now, we've heard this can happen. I have, before I recommended it, mm -hmm. I tried it, and I saved my long file names. So I'm, I'm um, maybe that there's a different version of X copy or whatever, but it, it's true. If you're worried about something like that, uh, you might want to use a, a different kind of copying method to go from one to the other. But the Windows 98 X copy, l let me try it again. But I tried it, and it seemed to copy all the long file names. It should. You know, you may have to say copy all the attributes of the file. Oh, there you go. Maybe Including that's the it. long file name, yeah, which is that's one of the attributes. What it is. I'll bet that yeah. it, you are so smart. Ah! All right. Uh, here's an email from Firefighter Henry. Hello, Firefighter Henry in Sterling, Sterling Heights. Heights, where we are going. He said, we We're going are. To be there Saturday. We at the Sterling Heights Fire Department Station, number three, unit two. Hi, Fire Department Station three, unit two. <laughs> are excited to have you visit our city. So cool. if we're on town on Friday the 5th, we're invited to stop by the fire station for dinner, dessert, or say hi. Aww. Do we get to go down the pool? Ooh. She's always wanted to do that. That could be fun. I'll tell you what, we're, we're going to sit in the truck. <laughs> we, we have a pretty busy schedule on Friday. We've got at least yeah. two radio interviews. We're doing a morning like show, and we're doing a, an afternoon show in Detroit. But if we get a chance, I would love to do that. Maybe we can, oh. get, maybe we can get, the, get over there with the camera crew and, and sh get pictures of you sliding down this pole. That'd be kind of fun. Uh, dear Kate and Leo, Richard writes, I have an opportunity to upgrade to a faster processor. I, uh, I want to know if I should get... He's got an Asus motherboard. He's thinking about going to a P3600 or two Celeron processors on a BP-6. In both cases, he'll be running Windows 98 and Linux, but he mostly likes to game, Kate. Really, Leo? What, yeah. what, what do you think? Gee, I think maybe that, maybe, maybe am I, I should. In, am I in trouble? Oh, yeah. All right, uh, I think probably what you want to do, you know, gaming, I'd say a Pentium 3600 really is going to be a better right. way to go for gaming. Most games that I've seen do not yet take advantage of two processors. Nothing in Windows 98 does. No. Now, I'm I have to NT, say... I'm gaming on NT. I've been running Windows uh, 2000 on my BP6 with the dual Celerons and been very happy with it. And I understand some games do multiprocess in that environment, Quake 3 and things like that. So right. in time, I think that's going to be a good choice. If you're buying for today, get the Pentium 3 600. If you're buying for next year, I'd say the dual Celerons are a better way to go. Certainly I'll, cheaper. I'll go with that. Okay. All right. That's it for this edition of the Screensavers. I'm Leo Laporte. I'm Kate Patel. And I'm Thank in the doghouse. You bet. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you next time on the Screensavers if he survives. <laughs> bye bye, folks. <laughs> Can I? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Big thoughts, big theories, big thinkers. By the year 2010, 95% of communication on this planet will be between things, machines. When cryptography is outlawed, only the outlaws will have encryption. We've barely scratched the surface here of what, of what we're capable of employing technology to do. Join me for Big Thinkers, where we take you inside the minds of the leaders of the information age. Every Wednesday night, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, 7.30 p.m. Pacific, only on ZDTV. Now the latest from the ZDTV Newsroom. Hello, I'm Victoria Ricanio for ZDTV News. An ex-Clinton advisor is converting to digital politics. Dick Morris claims his new e-ballot site, Vote.com, is a major shift in the democratic process. The former Clinton campaign strategist wants to put you in closer contact with your representatives, closer than ever before. Vote.com holds electronic ballots on such hot-button issues as gun control, air safety, and gay rights. Once voters have cast their ballots and entered their zip codes, the site automatically sends emails to their senators and representatives. The site also features a regular column written by Morris. 
Morris resigned as President Clinton's advisor over allegations that he discussed White House affairs with a prostitute. For more news, check out our website. That's at ZDTVNews.com.